Hi YouTube. Today we're going to fix two water problems on my espresso machine. The first one is this right here. The water indicator light just randomly comes on sometimes and stops the machine altogether even though there's enough water in the tank as you can see. And the other problem is when the machine does run we got a leak. There's always a puddle down below. So I'm going to open the thing up and have a look and we're going to fix those two issues. So while I take this thing apart, let me just add that this is a DeLonghi Magnifica machine. However, the water problems that I have and that we're going to fix today are typical for any espresso machine, no matter what brand you have or how expensive it was, especially if you have hard water. Then over time, um, minerals are just going to build up within the machine. Even though you descale it regularly, it still happens and eventually you'll just have to take the thing apart and fix it because you constantly have these warning lights coming on saying that there's no water in the tank even though the tank is full. So I'm going to clean this out first a little bit before we get to work on it. So this is the heating element and I always had water coming out right here, this crack right there and there was always wet and a little puddle. Then down here at this hose it was dripping. Back here I'm going to replace those gaskets. Uh, this one I've done before and down here it was always wet. So up here there's also another hose which hasn't caused too much problems yet and then down here is the flow meter that's the thing you got to fix when you get faulty warning lights about your water level but we'll get to that later so first let's go back to the top we got four screws up here one two three and there's a fourth one so take all those out and <coughs> Get, get rid of the, the plugs and the wiring and everything. Everything needs to come apart, otherwise you won't be able to get the heating element out properly and get to the, all the gaskets. If you've never done this before and you're not sure whether or not you're going to be able to put this thing back together again, just take a bunch of pictures um, of your progress and then later if you forget where everything goes, just have a look at your photos and that will help you. Okay, so this thing's loose and now we will have to disconnect all these little water lines here, these high pressure lines. Um, you can just remove the clips. I use a pair of needle nose pliers. You can also use a pair of wire clippers. That sometimes works better. Uh, so these little clips are very common. Most of them look very similar or the same in different machines. These two here I'm not going to replace today because I've done that in the past so we're just going to leave those. So let's wiggle that out here. Okay, so there's the first hose. So there's a little gasket sticking in there as you can see. Um, the way to get out this gasket I use a little nail just one of these guys here and I try to grab the gasket with the with the head of the nail just like so and then you can get them you can get them all out easily okay so those are the old ones I'll have to if you have a look at these gaskets they are, they are not springy anymore not soft anymore they almost keep their shape if you push them together, squeeze them. Like this guy here, they spring right back, but the other ones are pretty hard already, so no wonder they're leaking. Okay, where's the other one? Um, up here, so let's take that one out. It's a little hard to get to. All right, there it is. There's the clip, and now I can take out that high pressure hose and the gasket. By the way, all the high pressure hoses are usually small, very hard plastic kind of lines and the low pressure ones where your flow meter is, well that's where you'll find your flow meter later if you follow the low pressure lines, um, they're usually just very soft tubing. 
Okay, let's see what's next. Um, oh yeah, this one here. Let's take that out. I really didn't have any problems with this one here, but since I got it open, I'm just going to replace it anyway. I've never replaced this one yet, so I may as well. Not coming out. There it is. Okay, the gasket again did not come out. As you can see, it's not on the line, so it's stuck in there. Or, yeah, there it is. I'll get my little nail and flick it out. Oops, I lost it. Oh, there it is. Okay, there it is. Yeah. Uh, that's still pretty good. It's still quite soft, so maybe I'll put that on this side. Do the other ones that are still new. Okay, let's take this thing out and get to this one down here. Remove the clip. There we go. And get that little high pressure line out. Again, the gasket is stuck in there, so we'll just pick it out with our nail again. That's also quite hard and definitely needs to be replaced. So let's see, what have we got here? So let's just have a look down here. This is the actual heating element. Let's just see if there's any signs of water damage. I can't see anything, no rust or anything. Okay, looks good. So let's get some new gaskets and put them on. I got these in a hardware store in the plumbing section so they're pretty easy to get standard gaskets just make sure you measure uh, the old ones so you got the right size for your machine we'll just stick them in and put the clip back like so and that's it that's all there's to it okay the other gaskets got to put this thing down right so it sits properly so this is another brand new one very nice and soft we'll put that onto this line here okay stick it back in get the clip and secure it with that little clip or pin or whatever whatever you call that and that's it put it back where it belongs and <coughs> Let's see. Let's put this one back on again. And oh, look at that. There's a little spacer in there. And another gasket. OK, so this thing has two gaskets with a spacer in between them. So we'll have to get that one out too. Um, where's my nail? There it is. So let's get this gasket out. Yeah, definitely old and hard gasket. You can't really see that on the video, but when you take them out and squeeze them in your hands, yeah, it's very obvious that they're old and used. Okay, so I got a new gasket here. I'll stick that on first, and then the spacer, and another gasket. Uh, where did it go? Where's my gasket? Oh, it fell down. Oh, great. Where'd my gasket go? Oh, there it is. Okay, so we got it. Um, all right, let's put that one on. There we go. And now we can put this thing back on. Make sure it's it's all the way in. And then we, we're going to secure it again with that clip. And that's it. There we go. And now the line from the other side here. Nice new gasket, very springy, very soft. And put that on here. And reconnect the line. Put the pin in to secure it, and that's it. 
Okay, next we're going to reconnect the wires and everything. And as I said, if you don't remember where they go, just take pictures beforehand and then you'll know exactly which wire goes where. And we'll put those all back into this clip here. All right, and the water lines, we're going to put them back into their guide, guides that they have there. So they're seated right. Okay, I think that's it. Oh, wait, I, this is loose. I think I forgot to screw the heating element back to the mounting bracket. So let's see if I can take this out without taking off the lines anymore. Yeah, that works. Okay, so don't forget that. Um, let's put the screws back in, two of them on this machine. And once I got them in, I'll tighten them up again. Put the handle back on of my, of my screwdriver so I can make them nice and tight. All right, so this is it. Now we'll put the whole thing back. Um, which way does this thing go? This way, okay. Um, spacer, make sure everything sits and fits snugly the way it should before you put the screws back on. Okay, everything looks good. So here again are the old gaskets that are really hard, almost brittle. And these are the new ones back here, very nice and soft. So they're gonna make a big difference, I hope. So let's connect this line up here. All right, oh, I've got to push that down a little bit, my pliers. Yeah, that works. Okay, um, here's the clip. Let's put that little pin back in. All right, there it goes. It's better actually to use a rounded needle nose uh, pliers for this thing because mine are square and they don't hold on as well to those round clips. Okay, let's put all the hoses back and put the screws in. By the way, I know a guy who had the exact same machine that developed the same problems as mine here. And instead of replacing the gaskets or fixing the problem, he actually threw out the entire machine and bought a new one. But unless you got a lot of cash to spare, that is actually totally unnecessary. So here's one of the nuts. Um, the nuts can, it can sometimes be a little tricky to get these back on um, in these machines because they're so tight and sometimes the, the plates are hard to get to. The front screws here are quite easy because there's a lot of room to get to the end of the screw and um, place the nut in the right spot and tighten them. But for back here, it's not so easy. I keep losing the nut. It keeps falling, uh, slipping off my fingertip when I want to hold it. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take this thing out again here and see if that'll allow me to have better access to that spot where I need to place the nut. So the screw can catch it. Um, so what I'll do here is, because it keeps slipping off my finger, every time I put it in there and try to hold it, it just slips off. So I'm just going to put a little bit of glue on it here. Um, let's see, first the washer. I'll put some paste on the washer here and stick the nut on it so it won't keep sliding off. Okay, that's better, that holds. You can also use magnet magnetic fingertips like with uh, gloves that have magnets in them. But what I'm gonna do here now, I'm just gonna use, I don't have those kind of gloves, I'm just gonna use some scotch tape right here and wrap it around my finger, my fingertip, like so. And now that's gonna hold my nut and the washer.
So this works great. Okay, so I got both screws back on, on the back side, where it was hard to get to. Okay, so I won't need to tape anymore. That's a good little trick that you can use. Okay, now we'll have to get this line back on here again. There's the gasket that's stuck inside again. We'll have to get it out. There it is. Okay, let's put that back on. And then like that. And then reconnect that high pressure hose here. Put the clip back in and everything. And okay, then let's move on to our next problem with the flow meter. So just to remind you, the water tank here is full, but the water warning light says it's empty. And that has to do with this thing right here, which is the flow meter. Every espresso machine has one. It's always close to the water source, in my case, the tank. And over time, what happens is that just deposits build up within the flow meter, mineral deposits, limestone and stuff like that. And it clogs up the tiny little holes that the water has to flow through. Initially, I thought my water warning came from this switch right here. This is a float switch that's in the water tank and it kind of floats up and down with the water. And if it's if the water's empty, the thing is in down in the down position and it also triggers the, the water warning light and it transmits that information through a magnetic switch right here and then tells the machine that the water's empty. But that is not the case here. This thing is the culprit and we need to fix it. So in order to do that, we got to take it out. Let's get the hoses off here and open it up. Usually you can just unscrew it or twist it open like so and then take off the lid. And inside there's this wheel here with two magnets on it that start spinning like this when water flows through it. And then it tells the coffee, the magnets tell the coffee maker whether or not there's enough water to operate the machine. And if there isn't, then the warning light comes on and shuts off the machine. So we're gonna get rid of all that mineral deposit by drilling open that hole again. Here you can see it, um, all that yellow stuff around that hole it shouldn't be there and here on the right side it tells me 1.2 millimeters that's how that's the di diameter of the hole what it should be and in order to do that I'll just get a drill bit right here a 1.2 millimeter drill bit and we're just going to drill right through that hole and that's it for some reason um, the build up the deposit mineral deposit is always on the side where the water comes in, never on the other side uh, where the water goes out. Um, so if you look right here, you can see that circular buildup of limestone that made the hole real small. This is what it should be like after I drilled it. Again, before, after, before, after. So big difference. Now we're gonna put the flow meter back together again. Make sure the wheel spins right. Um, don't forget the gasket and put the top on right. Make sure it snaps into place the way it should. Otherwise, the thing may, may not work right. Okay, that's it. So now we're going to put it back in. Make sure the hoses are all snug and tight. And then that should work again. For some reason, this thing always clogs up. Um, my espresso machine tells me when I need to descale it, which I always do regularly, um, run it through the descaling cycle, yet uh, it's this thing still clogs up, even though I do descale regularly. So about once a year or a little more than that is when I get these warning lights as though there were isn't any water flowing. And that's when it's time to open up the machine and take out that flow meter and drill those holes back again to their normal size that they should have. Make sure all the hoses are back in their guides and also take care of these cables. Make sure they're all pushed all the way in. Otherwise, when you put on the lid, the back cover, 
you might uh, damage them and then you'll have a different problem. All right, time to test. Let's put some coffee in here and see if this thing works. All right, uh, it's not running. Oh yeah, we gotta plug it in, of course. And we have the machine is oh warning light. Yeah, of course, I gotta put all the stuff back in, all the guts of the machine. There we go. All right, now all the warning lights are off, and we should be able to turn this thing on. Let's see what happens. It's warming up going through the warm-up cycle. Okay, now the pump is running, so let's have a look if we fixed all the leaks with our new gaskets. No wet, nothing wet up here, nothing leaking. Okay, I think it looks good. Um, let's put that switch back on here, that lever. All right, and try this thing out. First, we've got to prime the water system, let all the air out. Otherwise, we will also get a warning sign. All right, turn the water off, dump this. Let's make a cup of coffee. Okay, everything's looking good over here. Down there, no water leaks, everything's nice and dry, coffee's coming out. Double check. Yeah, no more leaks. Up here also, everything's nice and dry the way it should be. Flow meter is also working. Great. Seems like we fixed it. Ah, nice coffee. Oh, what's this? Warning light is on, the water warning light. Uh, I think we fixed it, so this is, oh yeah. So the water level is low, as you can see right here. So, okay, I'll take that off, and now we'll have to put everything back together again. So this has to come off again, because the top goes on first than all the other stuff. But let's speed this up a little bit so I can get to the part where I can make a cup of coffee and also to the part where I'm going to find a new problem that just came up because I made a mistake putting this thing together. But you'll see in a moment. Okay, everything seems to be working right. But this is not right. There's a huge noise coming from over here, somewhere on this side. That is not normal. So when I push on here, the noise increases. Okay, we've got a problem, and I'll have to open that up again and have a look. Let's see where that noise comes from. Seems like it's these pipes, these uh, hoses, the high-pressure hoses. They vibrate. They vibrate pretty strongly when water is going through them, as you can see here. So I just didn't put them in far enough. They were vibrating against the cover of the machine. So I'll just open that up back there and take that hose out so I can put the other one underneath, the one that's touching the side, the side wall of the espresso machine. So I'll just tuck that underneath like this and then put that back in to hold it in place. All right, so hopefully that fixed it. Yeah, these high pressure hoses, whenever you take a machine apart and put it back together, they vibrate very strongly. So if those vibrating hoses touch any plastic siding of the machine, you will get these this kind of noise. So just make sure you put the hose in place where they won't touch. All right. And now everything is nice and quiet. Coffee's running. The water alarm, the water warning light is off. And everything's working just the way it should. All right. 
Hope that helps some of you to fix your own coffee maker. Till next time. Bye.